Hello friends, in episode 115 I talked about building a basic multi-tenant application in Ruby on Rails. You can think of multi-tenancy as if you, as the application owner, are a landlord. You own an apartment building and individuals or organizations who rent a space inside your apartment building, like with a monthly fee, are the tenants over the apartment. So that's more or less how software as a service works, where you, as the application owner, uh, have the application and the organizations rent a space in your application. Now, in this episode, I build this uh, basic uh, application where you could uh, create organizations and invite uh, users to be members of this application. And I had uh, a few commits. You can have a look at each of them on uh, how to build this kind of basic multi-tenancy application step by step. And the database architecture looked more or less like this. So a user, an individual, could be a member of multiple organizations. And in different organizations, he could have a different role. And all the downstream resources like projects, tasks, are scoped uh, to the organization. You can think of uh, a good example of multi-tenancy when you look at, for example, Slack. So here there are multiple separate workspaces with different users who can have different roles in each of these workspaces. And uh, you see all the resources are scoped to this workspace. So I go to another workspace, there are other admins, the billing is on a workspace or on the organization level. And uh, you can also have a look, for example, at Discord. Again, the idea is the same. There are multiple workspaces. Each workspace has uh, uh, users with different roles and you can uh, invite other users to join a, an organization. So this is more or less uh, how uh, this kind of multi-tenant uh, application should work. Now, there's also this uh, wonderful tweet by Matt Swanson where he talks about uh, this kind of multi-tenancy uh, database architecture can save you uh, like $100,000. I think it can not only save you a lot of money, but it can uh, like in refactoring, but it can also earn you a lot of money because uh, uh, B2B uh, organizations are more likely to use your application if they can have team access to resources in your organization. And uh, talking of this, Bullet Train uh, founder Andrew Culver also wrote a wonderful article that I highly recommend you to read. Teams should be an MVP feature of uh, whatever business application you are building. Now, going back to this uh, episode, I think it was uh, quite a good uh, starter of how multi-tenancy should work, but uh, you just can't cover all the cases uh, and uh, make this perfect in uh, just a few comments. Uh, there's a lot of work uh, that actually needs to be done to make this uh, uh, kind of logic bulletproof. So that's why I created MoneyGun. You can think of it of it as a multi-tenancy boilerplate or template application where I have uh, this sort of uh, architecture really well implemented and well tested. So I wrote uh, tests for all the possible outcomes in uh, this kind of architecture so that uh, it is bulletproof. It's not bullet train, but it is bulletproof. Now let's ha have a quick look at how MoneyGun works. So let me uh, restart. I've uh, Got it here. I will start the rail server bin dev. Okay, I started the application. I'm going to create an account. So let's create an account. I'm just using the basic device here. And here I have created an account and I can create a workspace or an organization. Let me create an organization. Let's name it Super Rails. Okay, create organization. So here inside the organization, I've uh, got uh, users or kind of members of this organization, and I've got one scoped resource that is inboxes. So for example, I want to have an inbox uh, where I would let users uh, uh, type which episodes that they want me to talk about uh, in my future Super Rails screencast. Uh, which episodes do you want in the future? So I've created this inbox and you see this inbox is scoped to this organization. Now let's try inviting another user to this organization. I will invite somebody. I will invite him as a member, not as an admin. I'll send the invitation. So the invitation has been sent. The user has been added uh, as a member. And let me accept this invitation as the other user. So in my logs, uh, I see that the invitation has been sent. I will uh, copy the link to accept the invitation. I will open it in a new tab, in the private tab. 
So let's uh, accept the invitation. Okay, and here I'm logged in as this other user. And you see, I am uh, already a member of this organization. I go to the list of users and you see, I cannot edit the roles of uh, myself or the other user because I'm just a member. The only thing I can do is leave this uh, organization. Let's go to inboxes. You see, I don't have access to inboxes because by default only the organization admin can uh, access inboxes. Let's try changing this. I will go to inbox policy. I'm using Pandit to handle uh, authorization, uh, uh, role-based authorization to different resources. So at the moment I say that only admins can, uh, uh, only members who have the admin role can uh, edit the organization or an inbox and view everything. Let's say that uh, any uh, member can uh, uh, view and edit inboxes. Again, I'm going to inboxes now. And you see, I as a normal member can uh, have access to inboxes. I can uh, edit this inbox. Okay, looks uh, fine. Now let's uh, try uh, going back to the admin and let's try, let's say, editing my role. I will try to go from being an admin to being a member. And you see, I cannot uh, turn myself into a member because uh, an organization has to have at least uh, one admin because otherwise uh, you won't be able to like uh, change anybody's roles, delete the organization and so on. So the organization will not be functional if there is no admin. So this is like one small thing that you should think of. An organization should have at least one member, uh, admin. Let's make the other member an admin. And now I think we can change our role to member. Okay, now let's try creating a new organization. So uh, I'll go to the list of organizations. I will create an organization named Monigon. Here it is. So uh, you see I have two organizations. Here I am the admin. Here I am just uh, a, a member. All I can do is leave this organization. And you see the inboxes are scoped to the organization. So uh, here, Organization one has uh, one inbox. Organization two doesn't have any inboxes. And you as a member of both organizations can have uh, inboxes from both organizations open in two separate tab. So that's the beautiful thing about uh, uh, root-based setting of current uh, uh, organization that uh, you can have uh, two different organizations open into different tabs. So, uh, Looks fine. Actually, about this switching of organizations, uh, I really like this kind of sidebar switching. Uh, obviously, it was inspired by Discord and uh, by uh, Slack. And uh, this uh, template uh, application also includes another kind of sidebar that uh, would not have this kind of double sidebar, but just one sidebar. So I have the organization Money Gun open. I see the dashboard users for it. I can open the dropdown and switch the organization and see the data for that other organization. Okay, let's dive into the code itself. So uh, usually when I look at a new Ruby on Rails application to me, first of all, I look at the gem file. Now everything here is just whatever I have when I create a new Rails uh, uh, 7 or Rails 8 application. I just have installed Tailwind. And uh, here are the unique gems to this application. So I've got device, device invitable, and bonded. Now, uh, I think Rails 8 authentication generator isn't ready for production yet. And device plus device invitable works perfectly for uh, authenticating users and sending invitations to create a new user in the application. Again, I use bonded for authorizing uh, uh, organization members, organization members, uh, uh, and organization admins to different resources within the organization. Then for the front end, I've got view component, inline SVG to display these uh, SVGs uh, and uh, active link to. Active link to, basically here I have inboxes. I go deeper inside inboxes and this inboxes uh, link in the sidebar is still highlighted. And I've also got this gem nested scaffold. Now this is a really nice one. Let's say I want to create a new nested resource within an organization. Let's say I want to have projects within an organization. Instead of just doing a scaffold and then having to update all the scaffold views and controllers to be nested within the organization resource, I'm just going to run a command for creating a nested scaffold. So um, let's try doing it. 
I have this example command, rail generate nested scaffold. Within organization, I'm going to have a project. And the project is going to have a name that is a string. So uh, let's run this generator. Rails uh, db migrate. Let's have a look at the db migration. So you see it was automatically scoped to the organization. And uh, if we will go to our roots, you see the uh, nested uh, scaffold generator had a few, like made two assumptions that we want to either namespace or put it within resources organization. But we already have resources organization here lower. So I'm just going to put uh, resources projects inside resources organization. If we have a look at uh, our projects, you see they are already scoped uh, to the organization. Uh, everywhere, so we don't need to update the controller, just one minor thing. Here we look for the project within all organizations. We want to see, we want to look up the project within the organizations where the user is a member. So I'm actually going to remove this set organization completely, and instead of it, I'm going to inherit not from application controller, but from this base organizations controller, where I have a method to set the organization, to find the organization from the organizations where the current user is a member. So projects controller inherits from organization base controller. Let's try running the tests. Okay, let's run the migrations, Rails DB migrate, Rails test. Okay, so tests are failing. This one is failing because uh, organization has many projects and when deleting an organization we should also delete the projects within it so i will say dependent destroy okay that test works let's open the uh, projects controller test so for it to pass again you see by default from the scaffold generator from the nested scaffold generator we already have everything set up even in our tests to have uh, projects within organizations i'm just going to sign in uh, a user and I think this test should pass. Okay, we just have one test not passing, inbox policy test, because in our inbox uh, policy, we said that uh, currently anybody can access inboxes, but we want only admins to access inboxes for this policy. Let's run the test once again. Okay, let's run our server and try to navigate to uh, projects within an organization. So uh, I go to an organization. I want to have the projects in the sidebar. Let's add them to the sidebar. So in this uh, navigation links partial, I'm going to also add uh, a link to organization projects. And here we have the projects that are scoped to the current organization. Let's create a new project. Uh, Okay, so here we have a project for Super Rails. I will go to another organization. I go to projects and you see it doesn't have any projects. So projects are scoped within an organization. Looks good. So let's inspect the code a bit more. Uh, so in schema, again, there are quite a lot of migrations for active storage to be able to add an uh, <laughs> avatar to an uh, organization let's have a look at an organization yeah we can add an avatar we have uh, again the most important part so we've got uh, organizations we've got users and the user can be a member of an organization via a membership and the uh, resources like projects are scoped to an organization and inboxes are also scoped to an uh, organization in uh, our roots again uh, everything that should be scoped to an organization we also scope it in the roots. This way we don't lose the logical hierarchy and uh, this kind of uh, multitenancy that in the roots works well. Anyway, I'm uh, really happy about this kind of uh, boilerplate, multitenancy boilerplate or static kit, whatever. Uh, it has, uh, I think, quite a good implementation of uh, this kind of uh, uh, 
organizations, memberships, and users uh, logic. I have written a lot of tests to ensure that uh, it works flawlessly and there are no leaks between data from different uh, organizations and users can do strange stuff like change uh, another user's roles. I invite you to have a look uh, at the, the code here. Maybe you can start your own application based on uh, this uh, starter kit. Uh, maybe you can uh, integrate uh, the uh, code for uh, organizations and memberships into your application. Uh, in the future, I'm planning to add a couple of more features like uh, being able to accept or decline a membership request to an organization because you can be invited to multiple organizations and not always you want to accept the membership request. And uh, possibly I will add uh, billing on, on, on an organization level. And if I add the billing, then it is going to be kind of a real software as a service uh, uh, starter kit application. Anyway, I invite you to have uh, a look at Monogon. Tell me what you think about it.